Hello guys and welcome to a brand new video. Today I'm here with The Legend of Korra book 4 episode number 6 and 7 reaction. All right, the previous episode, uh, the previous two episodes, the first thing that happened was the three um the three kids, you know, uh they were actually uh, you know given the uh responsibility to go and find Korra and bring her back and uh yeah they want went on their uh, like you know an adventure a little adventure <laughs> it was funny to see what like you know they kind of did like each had their own personality as we know milo was hilarious and uh you know like <laughs> while well, iki was getting mad and annoyed at all like you know their antics jinora cool and calm and uh oh another thing milo can draw pretty well we saw that like you know his his portrait of Korra, damn but yeah, you know, they went on their uh, journey to find Korra. By the end, Iki kind of like you know gets some information about where Korra might be, and uh, they won't go to the swamp. And at that moment, Korra and Toph they tap into the you know Korra taps into the uh, tree tree's roots, and she gets connected back again. And that's when Jinora gets the connection back and can find Korra because up until now she was not connected. And uh, they find each other, everything's happy, and in the end, Toph is like, there's only fun, one final thing you need to do, take the metal out. She does metal bending, she takes it out from herself, which shows that she is ready to face her fears and move forward into the future. And uh, yeah, everything goes well, and uh, you know, they kind of say goodbye to Toph, and uh, Cora starts going on her own uh you know destination uh which was not the uh, air temple but zafu because zafu is in trouble and she goes there tries to negotiate between the whole thing of um um what was her name uh, kuvira kuvira yeah the whole thing with kuvira batar and all that stuff that's happening you know with, with su yin and um the thing here is they them like you know in, in that like you know side of the what's happening um bolin has been very badly tricked by kuvira and uh, now the whole thing little by little starts started crumbling and the whole facade came out where in the end kuvira thought that bolin was going to help him uh, help her get and to an understanding with suin but then she realized that bolin has no power here and um, that's why you know by the end of it bolin realized that kuvira is crazy and uh, she's not what he thought it would be and uh, she tries to and, and at the same time um varik also realizes that <laughs> and uh, that kuvira just wants him for his spirit experimentation whatever the spirit root experimentation and uh, she will do use it for doing harm and uh, they get imprisoned and uh, varik julie and um bolin try to get out unfortunately they get get caught again like Kuvira's people and in the end we can kind of see like a little outburst of Julie where Julie's like yeah I'm not having this anymore um I'm going to help you out from now onwards Kuvira I pledge loyalty to you I don't like Varric I never liked Varric and he always like you know exploited me now here's the thing um I feel like this is an a trap a plan for uh infiltration and you know what it wouldn't surprise me if Varric was in on this plan um because in the end i do think that there was like a little weird section where julie was like do the thing and Varric is like no not that thing maybe that's a code word <laughs> i don't know if i'm looking too much into this maybe that's a code word of them like oh like we're going to do it in this way you know like julie's like i'm going to infiltrate and try to like you know break everything from the inside and Varric realized that and that's why that was like a code word of for them or something i don't know i think i'm looking too much into it but the fact is i still think that julie that's that was a acting of julie like you know like she she's yeah she, she she's still on our side we'll see we'll see about that what happens anyways let's start this is episode number six of the legend of Korra. i'll be putting the subtitles and the timer here sync it to whichever is a preference and let's get started all right here's the countdown three Two, one, go. Oh. 
All right. Yep. But it was too late. Oh yeah, and that happened. <laughs> Battle of Zhao Fu, okay. Oh god, what? Oh, it's Guvira, isn't it? Or maybe not. Guvira is the only one who does stuff like this. Oh no, no, it's Suyan, okay. Hmm. Oh my god, I feel like something's going to go wrong. Alright, well, they're doing this stealthily, which is good. Hmm. Oh boy. Okay. All right, that's that's Kuvira, isn't it? Oh. Wow. Oh no, I feel like that's a booby. Oh no, that's that's a fake one. Wait, that's Julie? Oh god. Well, that was a trap. Okay. Yeah, better, better than trying to be like a dictator like this, like what? Hmm. Well, they already are. <laughs> ah. Up oh, here we go. Hmm. Yeah. Great. Well, Cora, now you do need to do something. Yeah, okay, wow, that, wow. <laughs> then what do we do? Ah! What? Cora, you are okay, this girl. She's always in the extreme of something. Yeah, you tell him, um, Milo. Oh my god. Uh, how many times have you promised to do things, Cora, and it never worked? Oh god. Yeah, these two can stay. But will they stay? <laughs> like we know how Milo is. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> Very <laughs> Oh Lord. Well. What work? Oh, great. And you, you want him to work and this is how you're treating him? <laughs> no tea. <laughs> oh, Lord. Hmm. 
Wow. Yeah. No, what can they do? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> yeah, that's a good idea. Come on, that's a trick. Breakfast. Come on, this is probably some kind of very plan. I hope so. Oh wow, what the hell? Come on, Cora. Like I, I hate the fact that she's just so extreme in either way. Like when she gets mad, she goes crazy, and when she's oh god. Peaceful, okay. Oh god. Yeah, he she doesn't oh crock. Yeah, mmm. You liar. Oh god. She's the avatar! This is... Oh, shut up. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, wow. I feel like going and slapping her. What, what type of... Come on, let's go. I, I need a fight. Oh my god. Something is going to happen. I'm... Shut up, where were you when Cora was saving the world? You wouldn't be here if- okay. Like the audacity of this lady, it's pissing me off. How dare she? Like, I re- oh my god, I'm gonna lose my mind if Cora loses here. I'm gonna lose my mind. If Kuvira wins, I'm gonna lose my mind. I feel like that's what's going to happen, and I, I, I really don't, wouldn't like that. God. Come on, metal bend, metal bend, Cora. <laughs> Yo. Cora. Oh, she's still. Uh, I, I, I feel like she's still not. Yeah, like. Very recently she got the metal out, so. Come on, Cora. Don't. Oh my god. happening how is she dodging everything and Koran unable to dodge anything I, I guess she is uh, like that's probably the problem here like you know like Cora is just got well very recently so that's probably hindering her physical capabilities I don't know otherwise it doesn't make sense the thing <laughs> Mm. 
<laughs> the thing. Yeah, you suck, Bolin. <laughs> you are not fit to be an assistant. What? What can you do? Piss off. Nah. Yeah? Yeah! <laughs> yeah, Batar! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> yeah! That was that was a that was a signal, I think. Come on, bowling, I think. Okay, come on, Cora. She's getting there. Oh lord. What? What? Come on, get up, Cora. Yeah, she's not ready. She recently got the poison out. So, oh boy. Come on, get in the avatar state, Cora. No, 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 no. No. Yeah. <laughs> Can you keep quiet? Hmm. Oh. All right. Yeah, he probably has some plan. <laughs> Stand back. <laughs> yep, that's how we do it. Self destruct. Wait to self destruct. Yeah. Yep. Thank you, Varric. Yeah, Batar, go back. Go back to your Kavira. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't think it's a bluff. We'll see what's happening. Yes! <laughs> you tell him, Varric! <laughs> you stupid! Yeah! Well, extra security! Yeah? Exactly. Come on, Cora! Come on! Oh, God. Everything's happening in slow motion. What the hell? Oh, my God. Cora's not okay. There you go! Yes, come on! Just, just beat her up! I, I, I don't care how. Let's go! Come on! Yes!
Oh boy. Oh no, she's planning something. Oh my god, she still hasn't. Oh. Why? Oh. She's still. Oh boy, her trauma is still not healed. Oh god. Ah. Oh. I can't believe this. This is just infuriating. You know what? Nobody cares about the agreement. Ah, oh, come on, grab core and run. Or, or you could do that. Yeah, I guess. There you go. That's air bending. Oh boy. Oh, who is he calling? She's calling for help from. Oh, uh, Iki. <laughs> Raw emotional power. Uh, let's see Milo's masterpiece. Milo can drop really, really well. Inner Milo. Okay, there you go. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Come on. Bye bye. I think that's a real bomb. I think that is a real bomb. Yeah, it is a real bomb. Uh Yep. <laughs> Oh no. Like. <laughs> oh yeah, can can they? Yeah. Oh boy, it's gonna hurt. Oh. There you go, you see that was not a bluff. <laughs> yeah, no spirit vines anymore. What are you gonna do? Your beloved Kuvira won't be happy about this. <laughs> the thing. <laughs> Oh god. <laughs> oh. oh. Come on, Cora. Oh my god, she needs to. Oh. <laughs> oh my god, here you go. Milo's here. Come on, let's go. Okay. Yeah, we cannot we cannot do it now. Ah. Oh god, she's pissing me off now.
There you go. Oh my god, Batar is annoying me now, really. Oh, someone slapped this kid. He didn't get proper education. Yeah. Like, this is what happens when you pamper your kid. That's, that's ridiculous. Like this, this really shows how, like, you know, in their own way, like, no one, okay, I'll talk about it later. Yeah, you can't do assistant. Ah, all right. <laughs> well, I'm pretty sure now. I'm pretty sure now she is. She is trying to break things from the inside. Yeah, I'm like 90% sure now. Yeah, like, surely wouldn't betray them, you know? <laughs> oh boy. Alright, so. Oh, this episode was so infuriating. So infuriating. My god. I can understand that Cora is still... I guess you could say healing. It's, it's, it's Her whole mental trauma has not healed, you know? And whenever she... I guess she gets into these type of difficult situations where there's like a... Um, like, you know, like a situation of... Like, a lot of things are, like you know, like in her shoulders. She starts just thinking about whether I, I think like she's probably just thinking about where she whether she's taking the correct decision or not and like you know all her <coughs> past drama just comes and haunts her and uh, that's still not properly um healed that that part at least like the the poison is out but so what you know like it's it's still not properly Done. She she still needs a little bit of time. I don't know how she's going to get out of this whole uh, this whole complication. But yeah. Now oh god, like yeah, Zafu has fallen. Nothing you can do about it. All right. Mm, this episode we begin with Su Yin and his her two sons infiltrating. Trying to infiltrate, you know, like in a stealthy way, Zaofu, and uh, not Zaofu, sorry, um, Kuvira's uh, camp, and everything goes pretty well. Unfortunately, when they reach the uh, the quarters where Kuvira is supposed to be staying, you know, we see that it was not Kuvira; it was it was Julie, like you know, like like a like a doppel not doppelganger, yeah, kind of like that, you know, like a bait you could say so <clears throat> and obviously like uh, kuvira was waiting for this kuvira is like oh i got you finally and uh, caught you red-handed now this is the thing you know like there's still like so many multiple law wrong decisions taken in this uh, episode not only this episode the previous episode as well first of all um the whole thing about Cora trying to take a peaceful approach like I said this in the previous video as well. She should try to take a peaceful approach at first. If it doesn't work, just like you know, do what you gotta do. You know, like these type of people need to be dealt with in the hard way. Like there's no negotiating with uh, Kuvira. Kuvira is not that type of person. That's like as far as I could understand, as far as I could see, that's not in her. You know, like she should either like you know um, win or she'll die winning. That type of a character. That's Kuvira basically. There's no like you know no peaceful option here so as soon as Cora, hopefully Cora, Cora realized it in the previous episode she should have taken some step instead she's like even in this episode at this late she was like no we will talk and i'm like are you crazy like like this is what i don't like about Cora at all 
she's just so extreme in everything like isn't there like a middle ground like can she have a middle like you know, sometimes have like like a like a normal response to something either she just goes crazy when she gets angry and just just does some crazy stuff other either that or she doesn't do anything at all like what is this like i don't know i really don't like like one time two time i can understand i feel like in legend of korra korra goes through like so many multiple character developments that it it's just it's just weird at this point like how many character development does she need to actually realize like you know she she went through like three character developments and this there will probably be a fourth in this season you know like each season had korra getting like one character development and she still doesn't understand the basic of how to like you know deal with the situation and in season two we see her going crazy with anger she just starts jumping into conclusions and and just starts blindly trusting like a person that unala who comes from i don't know where and instead of trusting her parents she does that and uh, like you know like the blind faith just just weird in my like you know in, in that season in season two and now in this season we see that she's so passive that that this is happening and what she's saying is oh like you know you are at fault uh, like not, not you sorry suyin is at fault because suyin went and tried to attack them like i understand suyin is at fault but that's not the point here the point here is you are on their side you are on the good side and it's very apparent what the good side here is and what the bad side here is if Korra still can't understand that i don't know what would make her realize like she still thinks that kuvira can be negotiated with how this is the sixth episode i guess she barely met kuvira i guess that's one point you know she barely met kuvira in like the previous episode i guess yeah you know what i, I guess that's like a probable explanation but at least like she's hearing from other people that oh this is what's happening kuvira is doing this shouldn't, shouldn't she come into a conclusion a proper conclusion that you know what after listening to so many like you know statements about from different people maybe kuvira is that wrong here maybe she would like you know negotiating with her is not an option here like can't she think of it in this way <coughs> like, this is not what i don't like like she just goes into the extreme of an anything and everything like why like ugh, i don't know i really don't understand like this this whole thing like am i am i misunderstanding something like is is there like a probable expl uh, explanation like why why does she ugh, like this is what pissed me off in this episode you know like that scene especially when um opal you know it's like oh i hope they're okay and then there's this announcement that oh su yin tried to assassinate me at, at night and that's why she got caught you know like kuvia just announcing that in the um announce the thing the mic <clears throat> and here opal is like kora you can let go kuvia get away with this let's go and bust them out and <clears throat> you know <clears throat> and like oh this the, the next thing pissed me off like kora says like where is that part jinora is right your mom attacked the camp vera was just defending herself what this is the most weird dialogue it, not only, like yeah this is the most weird dialogue that i've ever seen coming from cora like what so like according to cora <laughs> jinora is right kuvira was just defending herself your mom went there on her own so she doesn't say that suin has at fault but i guess that's what she is actually signaling you know like, can't Korra understand that this Zafu was their place from the beginning? The one who came here was Kuvira. So, why? Like, wh what type of logic is this? I, I don't know what, what, like, I don't know. This, this, this dialogue or this line just pissed me off and I don't know what to say. And I'm like, are you mad, Korra? Like, what? 
like this this is the your, your con this is the conclusion that you came to and and i really don't understand what the hell she like you know what type of a, a, a like and like an understanding she came with like at that, that moment what like she, she, according to her like yeah Jinora is that right because um um what, what's her name Kuvia was just defending herself yeah and you know what what the funny thing here is Cora <laughs> Sweeney is also defending herself her city her country her people that's what she's trying to do you know like I don't care about uh, what uh, Kuvira is trying to do. The first and foremost thing that Kora should realize here is Suin is doing the same. Suin is also trying to protect and defend. And you know what the funny thing is? She's not trying to defend herself. She's trying to defend the whole country, her people, everything. And this is the, the thing that Kora comes up with. I'm pissed off, at, at least, especially at that line. I'm really pissed off. Like, what? Oh my god, like... <sighs> Anyways, I think I got a little bit too heated at that moment, but this this line really pissed me off. Like, what the hell are you saying? Like, anyways, um, so either way, Cora's like, yeah, like you know, like we shouldn't do anything. We should talk. We should talk with Guvira first, and yeah, like, okay, I guess we we will have to talk. Like, nothing else we can do about it. Uh, the Avatar has decided so. So yeah. And uh, while on the other hand, Varric and Bolin, they are in their own problem. Varric is just doesn't have, since Zuli is not there, Varric is like, <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> I'm, I'm just so lost without Zuli and he doesn't have a hot cup of coffee, uh, tea, nor does she have like her assistant. So when Batar comes in and Batar is like, oh, you need to do the spirit vine research, he's like, I don't have an assistant. <laughs> and I love the fact that he, he like, as I said, you know, I, I was, I was quite sure that Varric had a plan there. That's why he, he tried to like, you know, play it like that, where when uh, that random guard was going to be his, uh, like, an assistant, he tried to like, you know, make the guard not become his assistant by scaring him, by saying that, oh, like, you know, yeah, like, you know, you probably lose your hands because this is the spirit vine and you saw what happened. So as soon as I saw him trying to do that, I realized that he's planning something and Bolin is like a requirement for that plan. So that's why, you know, like his plan became successful. Uh, Batar in the end was like, fine, take Bolin as your assistant. And um, yeah, on the other hand, um, the great avatar, Korra, he, she has come to negotiate with um, Kuvira. And uh, yeah, Kuvira is still just just unreasonably just saying that oh like you know like this is what happened they didn't didn't listen to me that's why I'm an attacking like, you know what the really crazy thing is about like it's about this whole thing you know like um uh Uvira, she's trying to act as if she did nothing wrong here you know she's like oh I think I what I did was very reasonable I came here peacefully I asked for your cooperation um your leader tried to kill me at night so yeah this is you know like this is this is why that's why i'm like you know holding them as prisoners you know like the way she's saying everything it seems like oh like yeah you know what like she's not at wrong here just like how cora said like oh she's just defending herself but i feel like everyone's forgetting the fact that she came with a huge army trying to get the, her hands on a country like is everyone forgetting that? Like what? Like she's acting in such a weird manner. It's as if she thinks that she's in the right here, while she's the one who came invading. Like that's the biggest. Like like what? Oh my god! Like she's delusional. She's deluded. Like I feel like Kuvira has some mental problems or something. Like this this type of god complex. Like this kind of megalomaniac type of attitude. Like that's her problem and she, i you know what i wouldn't be surprised if she genuinely thinks that she's not at wrong here i really wouldn't be surprised you know like if by the end of this season if we get to know that kuvira was like oh i was correct and she genuinely thinks what she did was correct i wouldn't be surprised because she's delusional i feel like at this point i feel like she's delusional she's she had this huge god complex this type of a thing that oh everything belongs to me and I would be able to make this place so much better, this type of an attitude. Yeah, I feel like that's her problem here. And she genuinely thinks that she's doing the world a favor. Like, wow. <laughs> like, at least, 
you know, like Zahir knew that she was doing something wrong, I guess, in a way. But in the end, Zahir also kind of became like that. That was a shame. You know, Zahir in the end also kind of became this type of a crazy madman just running after power. Like his, his starting was pretty good. But as soon as he lost uh, the girl, what was her name? Flea, I think. Yeah, I feel like something broke inside her, him. But yeah, enough about Zahir. Why am I talking about him even? <laughs> but yeah. Kuvira, yeah, I feel like Kuvira is just crazy. Like, that's basically what she is. And, uh, Pora comes in, and, you know, like, the negotiation happens. Yeah, unfortunately, um, Kuvira won't listen. And Kuvira is like, all right, let's fight then. And one versus one against Avatar. Now, here I kind of said that I'll be pissed off if, um, Korra actually loses. Like, Imagine the Avatar after fighting um, Amon, um, what's her name, Unalok, no, um, Zahir, Zahir, especially Zahir and those three. After fighting them, Kora losing to who? To Vera. Like, I'm not disrespecting Kuvira. I'm I'm pretty sure she has her talents. She has. She's strong, she's everything, you know, like, I'm, I'm pretty sure. But, no, I refuse to believe that. But, you know, when I saw the battle, I was convinced that, you know what, I feel like Korra might lose. Because, you know, like, the problem here was not that she lost because she lacked strength. The problem here was that she was still not um, prepared enough to fight an actual battle. Like, up until this time, Korra was in top shape whenever she fought the final battle, you know, like the whole Amon, the whole um, uh, Unalak, all that, you know, the final battle. And uh, like, you know, Zahir, while she fought Zahir, she was okay, she was fine, she was perfect, you know. She could go into the Avatar stage, she, she's just okay, she doesn't have any mental pressure. Now, it's not the same, even though the poison is out, she, it's like, you know, like, she, she was not able to fight. For like i think three years or something properly she wasn't then after she was able to walk then she kind of fought but she was still not in there always getting like trauma traumatic like you know uh, visions and all so you know like the these three four years she was not in the fighting game you know she was not there and now finally she has been able to extract that poison out still it seems like her trauma is a big deal so all that like, you know, if you uh, like, you know, mix everything up, all if, uh, if you add all that up, you know? Yeah, I feel like Korra losing here was appropriate because she was, she was really not prepared enough to fight this, you know? Like, she has this mental trauma in her head, you know? She's seeing weird visions now and then. She hasn't properly fought a battle for the past three to four years. So, losing to Kuvira, um, after seeing the fight, I guess I could accept that. Because Korra's not in her, like, you know, like, original shape, like, you know, form, or original, uh, like, you know, yeah, you know, like, condition. Like, she's not in a good condition. So, yeah, I guess it's fine. Like, if Korra really was in the top shape and he fought and lost, I would be, I would be like, nah, this is not it. You know, I'd actually say that the, the authors did a very bad job here. If, if Korra was in top shape. You know, like, like these three seasons, she's been fighting so many people and everything. Like, however, like, you know, I don't care how much strong um, Kuvira is, but if she, if she lost to Kuvira at her, at her top shape, I would have been disappointed, you know. Uh, but no, as I said, like, you know, I feel like this was appropriate here because she has not been fighting for a long time and she has a trauma to deal with, which is still not out. The poison is out, the trauma is not out, so... Yeah, I guess this was appropriate. I, 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 okay, you know what? I, I, I'll say that, yeah. This, her losing here was nothing surprising. I agree to that. And uh, I take my whole thing back when I said that, oh, I'll be mad if Korra uh, loses. Yeah, I guess she, she would have lost here either way because she's not ready. She is really not ready. So I take that back. Mm, and yeah, that's how it went, you know, Korra and, um, what's her name? Um, uh, mm, from Kuvira. <laughs> Kora and Kuvira start fighting. And you know what? When uh, Jinora said that, oh, she's strong, you know, you, you, you go into your avatar state and start to, like, you know, try to end this from the beginning. And no need to, like, you know, stall for time or whatever. But Kora's like, no, I can handle this on my own. At that moment, you know what I thought? I thought she was overconfident. 
in the end after everything happened i realized that was not overconfidence that was her fear you know her trauma kicking in that's why she said no i'm not going to go into the advertisement like i really thought in the beginning that she was overconfident and she was like oh i can handle this on my own i don't need my avatar state but no that's not the case here she was not overconfident she was scared of the fact that if she goes to the avatar state if the same thing happens like you know that was what she was scared about and this is an actual fight this is not a training simulation or whatever you know like this is not like she's not in front of tof trying to train no this is an actual fight so that's why she said like no i'm not going to go in the avatar state i realize that now like especially in the end when we see what happens you know anyways the fight was really good um i have to say like um held her like you know ground like you know how like still she was fighting as the avatar you know like there's like multiple elements getting like you know just uh, thrown at her so i guess yeah like you know props to her she she is pretty strong but <clears throat> still if cora was in her top shape yeah she, she would have lost and you know what i feel like she wouldn't even have picked the fight if she knew that cora was her, in her top shape she wouldn't she would try to go in some other other direction so she knew that cora was not ready and she that's why she was like oh let's fight you know she knew she was going to win and um we can see how like you know just like it felt as if Cora was fighting in slow motion that's how i guess tired and that's how not prepared she was like not fighting for three to four years would actually be a little problem you know it wouldn't be in practice and not being in actual fights so that's why she, everything that she was throwing towards kuvira was dodged by kuvira while kuvira just was continuously hitting Cora with her attacks while on the other side, um, Varric and uh, Batar and uh, Bolin are there, and Varric is like, is like you know, kind of asking, <laughs> making uh, Bolin do the assistant jobs. It's kind of funny to see the whole thing of, oh, do the thing. And <laughs> Bolin's like, what thing? <laughs> oh lord. And um, I love the fact that, oh uh, boy, like Batar is just. A, a kid with parent issues that's basically batar he is just that type of person like first of all he doesn't like when anyone calls him junior number two she thinks she he is like you know i don't know like better than others like you know she she he is you know enough i don't know like capable of handling stuff and she he isn't able to um you know like acknowledge uh, the fact that I don't know, I feel like there was like a whole thing of <laughs> like a little, you know, kind of a thing between him and Varric, where Varric seemed like you know, both a scientist and Varric was so better than him that he was kind of getting a little bit, you know, like a, a angrier or something at that moment, you know, like when he was talking with Varric. And there's a lot of problems with Batar, and these these type of problems are basically. What can I say? Like you know, like like problems which some people have. Like you know, like who who and like I I shouldn't say this, but I feel like most of these problems kind of come from I don't know, like from the the whole from their childhood and like you know their parents are also probably at a little bit fault here. You know, like as we can one thing we can very much see in this uh, show in Korra is that the people who we loved in avatar like you know like ang katara um Dolph, you know like as parents no one's perfect you know like each and every character they're not perfect parents like ang had her own share of problems the whole thing with how uh, tenzin always thought that ang expects something from him while um you know um what's his name um Bumi, Bumi, you know, like things that he has disappointed his dad, these things, you know, like these things falls under, like I'm, I'm feeling like, like a lot of things were not talked, like they did not properly converse and anything, like there was stuff between uh, him and, and them and their dads, which is Ang. Same with Toph, Toph wasn't able to, like, you know, properly uh, become a proper parent to Su Yin and um, Lin, you know, like they had their own grievances and everything, and I feel like here, Su Yin as well 
was not properly not only Suin but uh, you know his dad as well Bata's dad were not able to properly you know like understand their children as much as they think they did like this is a problem I feel like every parent has you know like every parent has like you know every parent in some way or the other they are unable to understand their children and this is perfectly normal and that's what I'm trying to say you know like Batar's problem here I feel like a lot of it comes from you know his childhood and like you know probably from the whole parents like you know, like, you know I, I feel like Suyin probably just you know like wasn't able to understand Batar the way he thought and he wanted to be understood and that kind of made like a complex for him and uh, you know like that's why he decided to go with um uh Kuvira in her in her plans because Kuvira most probably gave her or understood him the way that Suyin was never able to that's why he thinks that oh Kuvira is doing this for the better unable to understand the whole mess that this thing has created something like that anyways like the Batar is it's kind of like that I guess as far as I could understand but anyways, um, their Korra is getting beaten up while Batar and this whole thing is happening where Varric is like, okay, so here we are. Uh, the, the, the talk starts ticking and uh, Varric is like, this thing's going to blow up. <laughs> At first, Batar was like, I don't believe you. But then, you know, Varric, you know, Varric can do crazy things. So Varric is like, all right, so... Um, don't come near me, you know, like this does have like a, a timer feature But I also have remote control just in case you try to get me. So yeah, I'll blow this thing up Get out of here and don't come in this in this place and uh, you know, like <laughs> Bolin was just like no, I don't want to die while Varric was doing all of these things on the other hand Korra, like, you know, in the end, tried to go into her avatar state, but then get that usual weird vision he, she gets. The trauma kicks in, and she isn't able to properly finish the battle. And uh, Kuvira, you know, like, uh, incapacitated. Uh, no, what, what do you call it? Like, mm -hmm, captured her. I don't, incapacitated? Inca incapacitated? I think so, yeah. Um, anyways, um, <laughs> I captured her and um, yeah, she was almost going to, I don't know what she was going to do, but either way, Jinora and uh, uh, Opal, they do the whole tornado thing and Op uh, Jinora contacts Milo and um, Iki to come in and save them. <laughs> when <laughs> Iki and Milo are like painting and while the other, like Suin's other child, he was like, oh, this is so beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> to Milo he was like you need to bring out the inner Milo you know while Milo's picture was just so amazing but you know like the whole abstract art thing where you know like abstract art are more appreciated by a lot of painters than like realistic art that type of thing <laughs> he's that type of a person who looks at the inner beauty or inner thing whatever you call it I don't know I, I'm, I'm not so proficient with art but still <laughs> anyways why am I even talking about that um, the, the the thing here is uh, they got contacted and G Jinora, um, uh, sorry, Iki and Milo, they go on their journey, uh, on, 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 on their way to save them. While <laughs> Batar leaves the, 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 the train thing, the compartment, and uh, break off the compartment, they, they kind of detach it. And Bolin was like, oh, I'm sure you were joking, weren't you, about the explosion? And I, as far as I knew Varric, I was pretty sure Varric was not joking. And yeah, she, he was not joking. Because whatever you say, you need to destroy these spirit vines. Otherwise, they'll just get it. Get their hands on it. So, <laughs> I love the whole scene of Bolin was like, you know, like broke the, like a, the underneath compartment, the thing. Went to Varric, slapped him. And it's like, I hate you. <laughs> Grabbed it. <laughs> and goes down. <laughs> That was hilarious. The whole thing blows up, and uh, Bolin's like, "How can Julie even tolerate you for so many <laughs> years?" <laughs> oh, on the other hand, Cora gets extracted out um, by uh, Milo and Iki, 
and uh, Opal cannot do anything and mom and like you know her, her brothers are just uh, captured uh, Suyin is like don't worry about me you know and uh, yeah then the, the, later on we see Kuvira just telling like oh I have this whole place under control and all that bow before me and i i just hated the whole like and then this the, the look of disappointment on batar's father you know the way he looked at batar and that's just embarrassing you know like what the hell like where have you just stooped down to batar like this is what you're doing now like it's like it's shameful like i understand he has his own complexes and problems but still this is shameful like, that's your dad and wow <sighs> Anyways, um, oh, and then <laughs> next we see, um, uh, what's his name? Um, Batar says that I need an assistant to do the whole spirit, um, research thing. And, um, obviously, who is the only assistant here? Julie. And Julie was just, you know, like looking like that in the, in, in the direction. And I am pretty sure she is. She, she, she's playing a game and I'm sure she'll do something and she has not betrayed um, what's her name um, uh, Varric okay so anyways let's see the next one the next episode which is episode number episode, that was episode 6 this is episode 7 yeah episode number 7 alright let's start episode 7 I'll be putting the subtitles on the timer here sync it to whichever is your preference and let's get started Okay, here's the countdown. Three, two, one, go. Hmm. hmm. Oh, they're going to Republic City, okay. Reunion, okay. Ah, Pabu! <laughs> oh my god, Naga. Uh, Skora here? Yep. <laughs> Pabu Ah Yep, everyone's here. <laughs> ah <laughs> Yep, mission accomplished. <laughs> <laughs> and something did happen. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh boy. The adventure we went to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She needs a little bit more time. Yeah. Hmm. Oh boy. Um. Nabs. Yeah, that's the thing. Oh, there he is. Wait, is he? <laughs> Yeah, bowling, step up your game. <laughs> this guy. <laughs> yeah.
Oh. Okay. Damn. <laughs> and no piggyback ride, you know? Walk on your own. <laughs> and no need to do that. Oh my god, he's going to. <laughs> Alright. Yeah. We'll never reach a public city like this. What? What what the Oh Sami <laughs> Okay All right What the hell of what did Um, what? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't even listen to him, just left. <laughs> well, Laos, yeah. Your new friend. Yeah, best behavior. Kinda. Oh, the, like writing that they don't know. Oh my god. Yeah. Well, because. Yeah. Guy, oh god, oh, uh. oh, hmm, no, 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 I, I don't think so. E All right. <laughs> Royal bladder. For him. Wow. What, what if he gets kidnapped on the way? <laughs> I don't know. Mark is having fun in his new job. Oh my god, I was just joking. I feel like he really is gonna get kidnapped. Oh my god, I was just joking. He really gets kidnapped. This is ridiculous. Going to the... <laughs> Why don't you chew it up? <laughs> Wait, who's this? Wait, who are these people? Alright, don't say that. Yeah. Oh no. Oh! Wait, shoot, he's a firebender? Oh my god. Uh. Well, he got kidnapped. Great. Oh, go, go, move, move. Yeah, there you go. Uh, oh, boy. Oh. 
Oh my god, wow! <laughs> How? Okay, you're Korra, get your, get your things together, like you're the avatar! Oh no, this girl is just... Okay, there you go. Um, what type of a car is that? Yo, what? This truck is just crazy. Hmm. Oh yeah, that's right. Ah, there you go. Go right, you need to jump. Or yeah, there you go. Come on, yes. Where is who? Oh no, did they drop him off somewhere? Oh my god, I feel like they dropped him off somewhere. Oh god. Oh god. Oh god. Yeah. Hmm. Can Cora do something? Naga could have helped. Oh yeah, he she can ask the spirits. She does have the connection again, so Alright, come on. Yes, there you go. Well, she's the avatar, that's why. Like whenever there's like some question, how did she know? She's the avatar, that's the answer. <laughs> yeah, who are they? Oh, it's a re-education, okay. Wow. Wow. Yeah, in a circle. <laughs> Checkpoint. Oh no, they're wanted people. Oh my god. They're wanted men. They're gonna get captured the first thing. Oh damn. There you go, lava bending. Yeah. They're also wanted. Oh my god. Hmm. Like, for us. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Is the avatar. <laughs> Tough. <laughs> well. <laughs> All right, so where are they? Oh my god. Yeah, now it's a problem. Oh boy, here we go. Oh no, I f feel like... Okay, they don't recognize them. Oh, 
Oh. Yeah. Oh my god, no. Vag is convincing. <laughs> yeah. Bad stuff. <laughs> you don't want any bad stuff happening to you, do you? Better, better open the way. Oh my god, a little bit. Oh no. Oh no! This was just. Oh god, Varric! You. <laughs> Run! Run! <laughs> oh lord. Oh my god, they again get captured. Or, or no, wait, she, they're still not captured, okay. Come on, lava bending. Bowen. Yeah, this is, this, there are a lot of them, but I don't know. Bowen, lava bend, come on. Oh, there you go. Nice. Oh, no. Oh, God. Uh. Yes, there you go. Oh, my God, it jumped. Okay, this is not good. Barrett, can you do something? Oh. Okay. <laughs> Alright. Nice. <laughs> He's keeping an eye on them. <laughs> Oh god. Alright. <laughs> They're all just busy fighting. And Varric is... Okay. Yeah. Perfect. There you go. Alright, now what you're gonna do? Yeah, yeah, let's go. Come on, let's go. No need to. Like, oh, I thought they were going to follow them. They're, oh, they're in still fighting. Oh, God. Okay. Come on. Lava bender. Yeah, there you go. A little lava can do. <laughs> yeah, just seal it off. Yeah. That'll do. Mm. Oh boy. Like, can Cora. I don't know. Like. Oh, okay. Wait, couldn't she do this a little bit earlier? Like. I... Avatar Instincts. Yeah. Oh my god, these two. Oh my god, they're gonna get trapped here. The door closed. Yo, the door! Oh no. Marco! What, what are you waiting? Okay, there you go. Oh! 
Oh, wow. Shut up and move. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god oh. okay oh. Cora, you can metal bend it oh yeah okay she can do that I guess Ooh. My god. <laughs> Good news. All right. <laughs> oh god <laughs> who's like <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh. well Air temple? Air temple. Wait, what is this? Oh, okay. So some is this. Alright. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Are you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like she loves the Earth Queen, so <laughs> Grandma Marco. <laughs> okay. Oh my God. Oh yeah, he didn't go to the. Okay, the, he he wasn't able to go. Very is like Nah, they have some <laughs> I think everyone's allergic to drowning oh, Okay, okay, there you go Come on, Varric! Varric! <laughs> the noises he makes uh, he's... What the? Huh. Oh my god. Oh boy. Oh my god! These guys, Toph is going to get pissed off and she's just going to... Yo, Toph will not be happy. You're, you're messing with the wrong people now. Uh, the wrong person, sorry. Oh my god. Yeah, I feel like the next episode, Toph will be like, Get out of my swamp and just... <laughs> <laughs> That'll be funny. To see them running away from Toph, you know? Drop is just mad. Like who who woke me up from with this noise? <laughs> Come rushing out. <laughs> ah. Oh, that'll be funny. Mm. And I'd love to see the metal bend in front of Top because you know, like metal bending in front of Top. Imagine that. You know, <laughs> like they're all metal benders. It'll be hilarious to see the metal bend. And Toffee will be like, ah, you guys, you, you just can't, you know, like, you, you've got this whole form wrong. You can't even metal bend properly, you. 
<laughs> like I remember her saying that my two daughters weren't even able to properly metal bend. Like they can metal bend pretty well, and Toph is saying that they can metal bend. So imagine. <laughs> oh God. All right, so this episode, um, <clears throat> Cora is back, and. Uh, yeah, like they kind of reunite in Republic City, like Naga, Babu, all of them are there. Now, at first they went to go to the Air Temple, obviously, to give their mm, report on what's happening. <clears throat> and uh, here Tenzin's kind of says that no one expected you to fight Rhea on your own. You have us with you and we're all going to help. And uh, yeah, like this is the thing, you know, like Korra takes responsibility a bit too much in my opinion. Like she has a big sense of responsibility, like especially being the avatar. And whenever something goes wrong, I feel like she, like you know, just blames herself. While she should realize, like, like, yeah, I understand she's the avatar, but there are people who have the best in mind for her, and they're ready to help. So, <clears throat> you know, like, rely on them. Basically, that. And I feel like this is one thing which. I feel like Aang was able to do a lot better. Like Aang relied on his friends a lot. Unfortunately, Korra doesn't have that. Like Korra usually doesn't rely on people that much, and she has just a weird sense of responsibility. And uh, mm, yeah, that's like one of the biggest weakness that Korra has. <clears throat> so yeah. Anyways, um, so uh, that's what happened over there. Mm, while. <laughs> Varric and Bolin are on their way to get out of th this place <laughs> and Varric is like, I'm not <laughs> Julie used to piggyback me like so yeah, I cannot walk on my own like you know like typical Varric and Bolin's like I am not Julie, you know, like like just walk on your own <laughs> And Varric is like ah, I deserve it. Leave me here. I'm, I'm just going to rot away in this place all alone <laughs> I'm a horrible person <laughs> And you, <laughs> Bolin gives him a little pep talk. He's like, like, no, we're getting out of here, and we are going to, you know, like save this, the whole thing. And Uvira is not going to uh, win in this, and we're going to warn everyone. So get up and start walking. <laughs> and I loved how Varric was like, all right, let's, like, you hop on me for, like, you know, I'll piggyback you for a time, for the time being. And as soon as she takes a few steps, <laughs> Trap gets them. That, that was hilarious. And, uh, yeah. On the other hand, um, they reunite. Um, what's her name? Um, uh, Asami. Asami. Asami, uh, Mako, and uh, Korra. They reunite. And, uh, <clears throat> okay, so, <sighs> Wu comes in from obviously somewhere and as always Wu is just like you know trying to talk with Korra and you know the usual, the usual weird stuff that he does <laughs> oh my god and uh, you know what <laughs> is that the, no I think it's a different person isn't it like I was going to say like maybe the reason why the waiter really didn't wait to listen to his full <laughs> order is because he was working for Kubira <laughs> But I feel like this this the waiter who came here and the person who was waiting in the in the toilet was different people So yeah, it'll be funny if that was actually the reason why you know like um when uh, Wu was like Oh, I need this. I need that these octopus fritters, fritters or whatever and He doesn't even listen. He just stands there a little bit and just leaves <laughs> I'm like wow <laughs> ah. Anyways, um, what's her name? Uh, Asami, it's like, I thought we, it would be the three of us. Where did he come from? And Marco's like, I, I cannot do anything. Like, I'm actually, like, you know, supposed to guard him. So, nothing I can do. And as always, like, you know, like, and he's like, okay, he, he'll be quiet. But he just keeps, like, you know, talking. And it's like, oh, show me the avatars, they, this and that. And, you know, it's just... <laughs> so... A little, you know, a little bit of a thing happens here where Korra, like, you know, when uh, Asami tells Korra about that, oh, I went 
to my dad and uh, you know like met him and Cora was like oh are you sure you know like he he can be trusted like like damn Cora like you know learn to read the room <laughs> like <laughs> he's like you know Cora Cora is pretty uh, what can I say pretty uh, grown up now like he she still cannot read the room like she's like like who asks that you know that's her dad like you know whatever she has done you know like still he is her dad so or it's like you, you oh you, you still think you can trust him oh god damn and Assam is like how how dare you like you know, you, you are not even here you know like and she kind of gets mad while Marco on the other hand you know okay where is it Well, these were happening. Wu is like, oh, I, I need to go to my to the, to the toilet. My royal bladder needs attention. <laughs> and he's like, at first he was like, Marco, come with me. And Marco has like, who blames Marco? You know, like, I don't think you can blame him. Like, he, <laughs> like he's, a, he's a police officer, like going, okay. Yeah. But I guess, you know, like, uh, since I guess they didn't think that anyone like you know, Kuvira's men would even be here. Like, I, I was looking at that moment. I was like, oh, it'll be hilarious if he gets kidnapped. I was just joking. <laughs> Turns out he really gets kidnapped. Like, my God. And uh, like, oh, like, as soon as I saw him using that, like the guy in the toilet using the spray, I was like, oh, boy. Here we go. This guy's going to get kidnapped now. And that's what happened. He, he gets captured. While on the other hand, uh, Marco and uh, Marco and uh, Barrick, they are also in a pretty like, you know, tough situation. They have also been captured by uh, the people from the re-education camp. And that's why there was like you know multiple people who like you know had like uh, fire bending, water bending, like multiple people. Yeah, that's that's why. And uh, <clears throat> while Marco, they're like waiting for uh, Wu to come out. Wu's not coming out. And thankfully, Cora was able to realize that something's wrong with the the people, the waiter. Oh, okay, yeah, everyone, all of them were part of the part of Kuvira's group, I think. Yeah. Even the waiter was part of the group. Okay, so yeah, I was correct. That's that was really the reason why that guy didn't even listen to him. You know, he just came and he's like, "Oh, can I help you with something?" And when <laughs> Wu was like, you know, uh, asking, uh, like ordering, he just le leaves in mid order. He just leaves. And I'm like, "What? <laughs> what type of waiter is this?" There you go. That makes sense. They're not waiters. They're they were waiting for um uh, to get Wu to kidnap him. Now, oh my god, like, I was like, you know, like, when Cora was there, like, I don't, I don't understand, like, sometimes Cora really throws me off, you know, I don't, like, her intuition is amazing, you know, like, we see that she realizes that something's wrong, you know, like, she sees that they're like, and she goes there and confronts the situation and tries to see whether Wu is in there or not. Like, her intuition is amazing, you know, like, that was impressive. But if she realizes that something is wrong, her guard should be up. She just goes there and she's like, oh, what's happening? Uh, you know, Wu, she, he sees Wu and she gets so caught off guard that this random waiter dude, he just earth bend her up into the ceiling. I'm like, what is happening? Like... As soon as she realized that something is wrong, her guard should immediately be up. Like she was not, she shouldn't be caught off guard in this moment because she felt something is wrong. That's the reason why she came from out from there. And that's why she was here. How did she get caught so much off guard? I'm, I'm baffled at that moment. And that's why I'm like, what the hell, Cora? Like, get your <laughs> like, stuff together. Like, this is really embarrassing for being an avatar, you know? Like, like random people is now like just, ah, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm really like, this, this part really like, ah, oh, I don't know. That's why I'm saying, you know, like Cora throws me off because we see she, her intuition is amazing. You know, 
like she she really was able to track down Wu at that moment like no one would have like you know realized like that was actually Wu Wu was been taken away by that like you know like because Wu is that type of person like it's just this type of dreamy wavy type of person you know so no one would have realized that Cora was able to track that Cora realized that Wu was probably here like that was amazing but then this happens that's why he she throws me off sometimes you know like she does some amazing things and then she suddenly acts like this and <laughs> like i'm face bombing myself <laughs> anyways by the end of it everything works out pretty well so yeah can't complain much so they start you know like chasing uh woo and uh like first they try to track down the truck and we see that the he, he, like you know like the guy has been taken like you know who has been transferred so to somewhere else some other truck so nothing helps and uh, like you know they they really don't know where to go so cora i thought she was going to ask the spirits but she just tapped on the spirit route and the connection was able to realize where who was and uh, yeah they start again following who trying to get him back Okay, on the other side, Varric and Bolin has been captured by these uh, people from the re-education center and they don't trust them, obviously they are, like, you know, Bolin and Varric, they look like people from the Earth Kingdom, <laughs> Kuvira's people, so they're not trusting him at first, but then Bolin was like, and they were like, oh, we need you to take us out of here, you know, you'll be, like, our, like, you know, uh, you know, you'll act as the guards transferring, you know, transporting us. And that's what's going to happen so obviously bolin and varic i was pretty sure they would have wanted posters up by now so i was thinking that they were going to say something like oh we cannot do that we are also wanted criminals but uh, they didn't say anything and i'm like okay well, i don't know why they didn't say anything like that like they should have at least told them that yeah there's a chance that our wanted posters are also there but anyways bolin is like you know uses lava bending and he's like you know what we also need help we, we should work together and uh, they agree obviously because they realize that they could have easily lava like you know like just lava bender and killed them all he didn't do that that's why you know they decided to trust on him all right on the other hand Korra, sami bolin uh, uh sorry uh, mako they are trying to track down lin and here Korra talks about the whole spirit thing how she was able to do that and uh, we go to the train station now i don't i really don't understand one thing at the beginning i was like okay cora's not trying to tap in because there's no spirit rules here so that's why maybe she's not able to do that the thing that she did but in the end she does do it again and i'm like couldn't she have done that in the beginning when they went to the train station that part confused me anyways um so okay they're in the checkpoint at first everything went pretty well where bolin and varic puts up a very good very impressive acting when Varric just goes off, you know, like he's like, oh, I did this, I fought two mole rats, I, like, you know, this happened, that happened, you think I'm in the mood to do the paperwork? You know, like, just let us out of here or I'll, like, you know, Kuvira will, like, I don't get to know. And as soon as she brought, he brought Kuvira up, people are scared of her. So yeah, they're like, all right, fine, I guess. <laughs> Opens the gate. Unfortunately, there's wanted posters and Varric just winked at the guy, you know? I'm like, Varric, you, <laughs> like, like, what the hell, like, <laughs> I, I can see now the wanted poster also have Varric winking, <laughs> that's crazy, and, uh, yeah, obviously they get you know, detected, and uh, the abuse fight starts, um, they are using those huge, uh, you know, automatic robots or whatever they are, not automatic, sorry, those robots, robot things robotic armors uh, while you know the fight happens everyone's struggling bolin is using lava bending still it's not working because these are like metal hunks of you know um so here varic's intelligence comes into play he just goes and you know like makes like a like a like a thing like a like a vibration sound thing i am guessing you know which he uses and there's like a supersonic wave or something goes out which completely makes all the um robots just break down 
Now here I was thinking like these guys are going to follow them, you know, like I was like, yeah, get out of here quick. Why are you fighting still? But then I realized that they're not fighting, but they're trying to hold them back because, you know, like these people were still there. Like, you know, the, the robots were gone, but they, they themselves knew metal, like, you know, like uh, bending. They all knew bending, those uh, security guards. So that's why, like, you know, like they weren't able to do anything. They were stalling for, like, you know, uh, over there. So Vag, the first thing Vag does is try to run away. But Bolin, obviously, this is Bolin. Bolin uses lava bending to help them out. Doesn't take much time, obviously. She he loads lava bending. Like those metal robots won't it won't work on them, I guess. But for people it's highly effective. So <laughs> he just uses that and uh, yeah, helps them out. And here, like as I said, like you know, Korra um used the the kind of, kind of the spirit method and I don't know why she she could have done that from the beginning. I don't know why she didn't do that in the beginning. When the ten trains were almost leaving, she did that. Anyways, you know, like they are able to track the whole uh, Wu down. They get in and go into the compartment where, like, you know, their Wu is kept. And yeah, a big fight breaks up again. Koro tries to defend them as much as possible and open the upper part, metal bends them out. And they're trying to get out, and obviously we need to remember that we're we're this is a host like not a hostage situation, but like an escort mission. You know, like you know how annoying escort missions are, and uh, you know if you, especially if you play video games, there's like a person who you need to save and defend continuously. And who is that person here? So this was a really big mess, and they're on top of a train. So and you know like and Marco can fire bend, and uh, even though Cora is the avatar. No, um, and um, Asami, the only thing she could do is like, you know, like martial arts and the electric thing. So in front of metal bending, you know, like they were kind of trapped. They were using the metal bending to kind of block both sides off. So what Korra does here is very good. Like I, I was saying that like, Korra could also metal bend them back, but she doesn't go in any of that. She just kind of puts them into like an air ball and jumps out, which is I feel like this is the best decision. Here, at least in this moment, uh, they get out of that. The train just leaves, and uh, yeah. And then Cora is like, <clears throat> okay, like you know, like we kind of went in a little quarrel a little bit. There was like a little, you know, stuff happened. But yeah, I feel like like you know, we should stop that. And you know, like after, like you know, like after so many years, we should properly become friends again, and you know, kind of like hug each other, all that stuff. So yeah. They're like, yeah, this is bound to be a bit of an adjustment period, Asami says. <laughs> and then they hug each other and <laughs> Wu is like, oh, I'm, I'm also coming in. <laughs> they just <laughs> block him off. <laughs> uh. Anyways, so now the question is, where should we go? So at first I was thinking like they're going to go to the air temple, but then like, you know, they have to go to Asami's place uh, where, Bo, uh, you know, like uh, Bolin and Marcos parents and their family are and uh, <laughs> the grandma comes in out and the grandma obviously she loves royalty as soon as she sees who she her royalty sense tingled and she's like oh you're royalty and <laughs> just completely swooned over <laughs> and uh, yeah on the other hand Varric and Bolin yeah they are safe now and uh, <laughs> they they take a lift on the, on their the, the the little boat that they have. Vag was at first Vag was like, nah, I'm not going to do that. But then, you know, nothing you can do. They need the help. So yeah. Now in the end, that was crazy. The ending scene was I I can see what's going to happen. The ending scene was wow. At first I was like, oh my god, they're in the swamp. And then I realized that Toph is there, and I'm like, oh boy, the next episode. <coughs> I I won't be surprised if I see you know if the first scene that I see in the next episode is that all these people are just running away <laughs> and Toph is just behind them chasing them. <laughs> oh boy, Toph's going to be pissed and oh boy, I can't wait to see that. <laughs> Anyways, that's it. Thanks for watching. This is my reaction to um episode number uh six and seven of the Legend of Korra book four. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to press the like button, and subscribe if you're new to the channel. Or you haven't subscribed comment down below anything you want to say anything you want to let me know i'll check them out 
that's it thanks for watching guys i will see you guys next week with two more episodes of the legend of gora until then goodbye and have a nice day